Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, March 22nd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. The United States government has an extensive network of radiation monitors around the country and no radiation levels of concern have been detected. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency RADNET system is designed to protect the public by notifying scientists in near real time of elevated levels of radiation so they can determine whether protective action is required. The EPA's system has not detected any radiation levels of concern. In addition to EPA's RADNET system, the U.S. Department of Energy has radiation monitoring equipment at research facilities around the country as well, which have also not detected any radiation levels of concern. Large numbers of people are concerned about the fallout from the recent earthquake and meltdown of a nuclear reactor in Japan last week. But from all accounts today, on March 22nd, uh, they've begun to cool down those reactors and may have them under control finally. The International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination is observed annually on March 21st each year in Canada. Canada exercises authority over a people with the only race-based legislation in that country. First Nations chief and councils across this country deal with the sad reality that segregation of a race of people is the governance that they perpetuate on behalf of the Canadian government. Unless, of course, they have self-government agreements in place. There are very few of those types of agreements across the country today. Chief uh, Isidore Day of Serpent River First Nation hosted the federal Green Party's Elizabeth May in their community on March 21st and gave her a message that he would like her to carry forward in her efforts to affect Canadian politics in the next upcoming elections. The Indian Act is not only archaic and damaging to our people on reserves, it is wa wasting away generations of precious human resources that could be collaborating with Canada in a 21st century economy." Unquote. The Indian Act was first created in 1876 and placed Indians in colonized state on reservations. As the late Harold Cardinal, a visionary and leading authority on First Nation issues said, instead of implementing the treaties and offering much needed protection to Indian rights, the Indian Act subjugated to colonial rule the very people whose rights it was supposed to protect. Red Lake will host what it hopes to be its first annual Elder Summit at Seven Clans Casino in Red Lake, Minnesota on Thursday and Friday, March 31st and April 1st, 2011. The event will include informational booths and youth volunteers from the Youth Council, AmeriCorps, and school students. The event begins with registration on Thursday, uh, March, uh, let's see, that would be Thursday, uh, March 31st, beginning at 8 a.m. At 9 a.m., Spiritual Elder Eugene Stillday will offer the invocation, followed by drum songs by the Red Lake Singers, and then a welcome by Red Lake Tribal Chairman Floyd Jordan Jr., and then on to a host of workshops and presentations for the day. Crow tribal members have voted to approve a $461 million water rights settlement with the federal government that officials say will help pull the Montana tribe from poverty by allowing more industrial and agricultural development. Tribal officials say the measure to approve the Crow Water Claim Settlement Act passed on Saturday with 72% uh, approval. The deal allocates to the tribe up to 300,000 acre feet of water annually from Bighorn Lake and 500,000 uh, acre feet annually from the Bighorn River. The federal government will spend $461 million on irrigation improvements, industrial and municipal water system upgrades, and other water projects. In exchange, the tribe waives any legal claims against the government for being denied adequate water resources uh, in the past. The Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma is leading an effort to rebury 124 bodies to be those of their answers, thought to be below, uh, those of their answers, is what it bills as one of the largest repatriation of its kind. 
The natives died five centuries ago, unable to fend off illnesses and diseases they'd never experienced before, like flu, measles, and chickenpox. Archaeologists exhumed the bodies in excavations along the Natchez Trace Parkway in Mississippi in the 1950s and, and 1963, along with various artifacts, but the remains ended up in what amounted to a museum storage. Excavation of Indian burial sites was not uncommon during the 20th century. Christina Smith, the cultural resources manager for the Natchez Trace Parkway, says the 124 bodies to be repatriated were found during construction of the 444-mile road the National Park Service operates in Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. The route follows a trail once used by Indians and later by settlers. Uh, Indian leaders uh, found those excavations demeaning. The National Park Service says that as of September 2009, 38,671 human remains have been determined to be eligible for repatriation by tribes. The agency does not keep records of the number of remains that have actually been repatriated, Coles said. The Choctaw Nation's previous largest repatriation effort involved eight sets of remains. And uh, having 38,671 bodies uh, that you can repatriate doesn't seem to be enough to study to determine that they're Indians, from what I can tell. I think they need to dig up a few more. It's an editorial statement, if you didn't know, huh? Collective bargaining rights would be restricted for many Alaskan public employees under a bill introduced by a state lawmaker there. The Republican State Representative Carl uh, Gatto of Palmer says his bill mimics one passed recently in the state of Wisconsin. The measure exempts police, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians whom uh, Gatto says uh, <clears throat> cannot strike. Gatto says it's important that the state stay ahead of the fiscal curve and that his bill is one way to do that. Wisconsin's version of the bill have sparked protests all over the state. Alaska House Democrat leader Beth uh, Kurtula says the bill is rather foolish and doesn't see it gaining any traction there. The Wisconsin Arts Boards decided at its March 11th meeting to actively contest Governor Walker's proposal to cut state funding for the arts by 73%, eliminate the Wisconsin Arts Board as a state agency, transfer its four remaining staff members to a staff program within Department of Tourism, and count the remaining funds associated with the arts under the column of marketing. The Wisconsin Arts Board is the state agency that uh, nurtures creativity, cult cultivates expression, promotes the arts, supports the arts and education, stimulates community and economic development, and serves as a resource for people of every culture and heritage. Since 1973, the Arts Board has supported artists and arts organizations, including tribal artists and tribes, with funds from the state legislature and the National Endowment for the Arts. Navajo tribal members gathered at a church near Phoenix, Arizona to remember one of the last original 29 Navajo code talkers. Lloyd Oliver was a member of an Eli group of Marines who developed a code based on their native language during World War II. He passed away March 16th at the age of 88 at a hospice in Avondale, Arizona. At a March 19th funeral at Gila Crossing Presbyterian Church in Levine, Navajo President Ben Shelley presented a Navajo Nation flag to Oliver's widow and family and another flag to the family of Oliver's late first wife. The code talker sent thousands of messages without an air in, on Japanese troop movements, battlefield tactics, and other communications critical to the war's ultimate outcome. With Oliver's passing, only one of the original 29 Navajo code talker now survives. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with, you, with us today and me, Gwetch. Come back again soon.